Uh, here I have a Rotel amp, it's a RA971 Mark II and it said it had no power on it so I'll go through some of the basic steps first thing is get across the power cord and turn the power on so we've got continuity there so that basically means our power switch is good, our transformer is good uh, so we can discount anything there to worry about now obviously we've got a couple of filter caps and a bridge rectifier that's the usual circuit board mounted bridge rectifier it's got a couple of AC symbols, little sine waves and then plus and minus on it sometimes they're a flat pack um, but basically where the power transformer wires come to the board and often there's a couple of fuses like this you'll see a black device which is our bridge rectifier so that basically converts the AC to DC it's just four diodes in a package so next thing we'll check yeah, that fuse doesn't look too good these are slow blow, they've got the springs in them that's good yeah, no continuity there, that one looks sprung, the little spring doesn't have any tension on it so possibly what we really need to check now is across these DC rails um, now this amp doesn't really have any good, it's got a plastic bottom on it and unfortunately that's not a removable cover Actually, I can probably get through the vent slots. Oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, that's something good. So I can actually reach the capacitors through the vent slots, I think. Can I? Oh, yeah, there's the terminal. Just. So we'll cross one of the caps. And, yeah, we're getting a bit of charging going on there, but no short circuit. So that's just the cap charging up. And see if I can get hold of this other one. That's charging up alright, so I don't think we shouldn't have any shorted output stage. I mean, we could have a faulty bridge rectifier still. But usually when a bridge rectifier goes, or if there's a major fault, that fuse will be very black inside. Uh, I reckon those four pins are our bridge rectifier. I think I can just get to it. Uh, maybe not. I'll we'll have to cheat a bit here, make sure you've got no power on it, this one hasn't been powered up for a while so it should be fairly safe and just connect all the pins and make sure there's no short circuits anywhere yeah it all seems alright, I really should have probably checked those capacitors for voltage while I was at it because we don't want to get across those if they're charged up and you know this, this amp wouldn't have been plugged in for quite a while but you should really check check the filter caps just make sure there's no voltage before you measure anything but that's pretty safe usually when they, they'll be charged up if the amp's got some sort of problem like no sound and the outputs aren't running and you've, you've actually got power going in if the fuse is blown they shouldn't be charged anymore, it is possible they could be but they should have discharged through the output transistors and stuff but just for safety's sake you should always double check the 10,000 mic at 50 volt certainly enough to give you a nasty shock if potentially you could even kill you so best to be very careful of those and um, we should really check, we've got obviously all our output transistors are on this heatsink which is a pair per channel or well, four per channel, but two pairs, I should say, a pair per, per voltage rail. Um, so it doesn't hurt to just quickly go along the front of those. Just There's a couple of fuses here, which I better go back to continuity, which are all right. Not quite sure what they do. 6.3, they might be speaker outputs, or they might be something to do with the outputs. Check all these resistors uh, around these transistors, make sure nothing looks burnt. If you've got shorted outputs off and they'll go black and then it's really just a matter of they've kindly even labeled the base and collector and stuff for us or at least the base so here base and emitter so just check each output transistor and make sure there's no shorts if you go from the base you should get 0.5 volt each way and yeah probably the filter cap or something across the collector emitter but we're looking for no short circuits usually best to check from one end pin to the other two pins and then across the other two pins so I've done 
the left one to the right, the middle on the right, and then I'm going across from the middle to the right just to make sure. This is all looking good. I, that fuse really hasn't blown badly, so it might have been, I don't know, something with the power supply or something, the mains power, or maybe it's just failed from uh, metal fatigue because these fuses will die each time you start the amplifier up. There's a lot of inrush current into those capacitors and that can actually, that makes the fuse flex a little bit each time. This is, you know, basically no sign of blackening in there. Just a, the spring's gone. So it's a 6 amp. Oh, I don't know if I've got any 6 amps. If not in a slow blow. Uh, I'll have to see if I can find one. Yeah, the highest I've got in a slow blow small one is 4 amps so that'll have to do at least a bit of a lower one if there is a problem in here it'll blow quicker but that'll do for now so I think we're safe to plug that in and just see what happens basically watch for a flash on the fuse and I didn't see anything I heard something does this have a speaker protection relay? I can't see one so next thing we'll check is our outputs. Uh, does this have a speaker switch? Speaker remote. It looks like B on and off. But always make sure your speakers are also actually connected. As in if there's a speaker A, B switch that they're not both set to off. Because that won't tell you whether there's DC on the output if they're both set to off. So nothing there really. Nothing there. Nothing. Nothing. I only really need to check one set of speakers, just make sure it is switched in. Because if there's DC on one, there'll be DC on the other. If there's no DC on one, there can't be DC on the other. Yeah, something made a little clicking noise. Oh, there is a little tiny relay there, I think. Is that what that is? Oh, yeah, 24 volt DC Japan RY901. So that must be a relay, whether it's a speaker protection possibly is because we've got a speaker switch here headphone socket so that god it's a tiny little thing not sure what year they made these amps but they're a later one probably sort of 1990s later 1990s i would think maybe even later than that so i think we're probably safe to hook up turn the volume down hook up our speakers and hook up a source it's a cd player go to cd Start that up and we'll hook up some speakers, powers off. What speaker set are we on? Direct speaker, as they call them direct and remote rather than A and B, but whatever. To, as long as we know what set we're on, so make sure they're switched in. Yeah, it'd be a shame if it's just a fuse, because I've been pretty unlucky. None of these amps really have big problems with them. Yeah, I hear something click in. Okay, oh, we're on listening. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, that seems to be working. We've got a recording setting switch and listening, so I think the recording one won't matter. That's just the output. Okay, even turn it off. The CD input, the tone controls seem to work. Hmm, it's a pretty loud amp. Doesn't take much to crank this one up. Yeah, quite a nice looking amp. Yeah, it actually lights up. Is that light around there? No, it doesn't light up around there. It just catches a lot of light around there. Check the other inputs. Tuna. Listen to the 
one. And it's tape. And oh, I have it. Auxiliary two. Yeah, sounds good. Tape one in. Yes, yeah, so that all seems to work. This has actually got a preamp out, which is a handy feature, but given the output power of this thing, I don't think we need to hook another amp up to it. Yeah, two tape inputs, auxiliary one and two CD tuners, so no phono on this, so it's definitely a later model, I mean you can tell that by looking at it. But uh, yeah, that seems to be all that's wrong with that one, so that wasn't very exciting at all, but Oh, well, I didn't pay too much for this amp, so at least I've got a good amp. I'll just have to make sure I get a 6 amp fuse, because that'll blow prematurely otherwise. Uh, and this amp should be fine.